from the spectacular Trump Castle in world-famous Atlantic City, it's time to play television's non-stop game of knowledge, Trump Card. And now, here's the star of Trump Card, Jimmy Sapolo. Thank you for joining us today for Trump Card, everyone. We're here at the fabulous Trump Castle in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where competition is the king around here. And we have three contestants who are ready to challenge each other today for over $15,000 in cash and a chance to win $100,000 in the Trump Card Championship. So let's play Trump Card. Before we begin, please welcome our Trump Card hostess, Miss Debbie Massey. Hi, Debbie. All right, now let's meet today's contestants. Contestant number one from Schoolville, New Schoolville. Jersey. Schoolville, New Jersey. Yes. Marianne Kane. Marianne, yes. welcome to the show. Thank A degree you. in modern languages from Seton Hall University. That's right. What French and Spanish. French, French and Spanish. Have yes. you ever taught them as you've no. gone through the years? No. Never a teacher. Never used it. Any no. practical application? Yes, in my current job as a paralegal, I have to speak with a number of people that only speak Spanish or French, so I get a chance to use that. Terrific. Time. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And Bob Wurgis. Correct, Jimmy. All right, I got it right. From uh, Irma, New Jersey, retired, married with six children. That's correct. What are the names and ages? What's the range? From 35 to 26. You don't look that old, Bob. <laughs> well, here. thank you. The makeup person here did a wonderful job. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the show. And uh, Mark Balser from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, who used to produce quiz and game shows in college. Anything like Trump Card? Uh, nothing like Trump Card. Um, that's why you're here and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hopefully I'm going to be here handing you or Bob or Marianne some money by the end of the day. Welcome to the program. Best of luck. Here's how we play our game. Each of the contestants have their own Trump Card. The object of the game is to cover all 15 numbers on their card by answering questions correctly. The first player to do so can win over $5,000 plus the chance to win the $10,000 Trump Card bonus. <laughs> Players, you can win round one and $750 in cash by being the first to cover all four corners of your card, and you'll do so by answering questions in the following categories, and they are twins, the 50s, sci-fi, and two-letter words. Now, each category contains four questions, and a correct answer will cover a corner on your card and give you the right to select the next category. An incorrect answer, and you'll be frozen out of the next question. Now, Marianne, you won the draw backstage, so if you will, would you please start the program for us? Yes, I'll take sci-fi. All right, everyone, hands on buzzers. May the best player win. Name the sci-fi novel, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Mark? Jules Verne. Yes, that's correct. Good start. We cover number 31 on your card. Uh, let's take Twins. In the 1988 film Twins, what unlikely actors played the Twins? Marianne? Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Yeah, that's correct. We cover number one on your card. Uh, I'll take twins again. According to ABC TV, this unusual series was the nation's most recorded show on home VCRs. Name this David Lynch program. Marianne. Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks is right. Yes, good start for you. Let me try sci-fi. This prolific author has written more than 200 books, including Fantastic Voyage and the Foundation series. Bob? Asimov? Yes, that's correct. Name this Russian-born sci-fi author. That is the correct answer. You're on the board as well. Let's try two-letter words, Jimmy, please. Various phrases, this word comes before hawk, lib, and nauseam. Name it, Mark. Ad. Ad, that's correct. Yeah, we've got the tie-in between Marianne and Mark. You both have two corners covered. I'm doing well with it. I'll stay with two-letter words. What two-letter word is the name of the Egyptian sun god? Marianne. That would be Ra. Yes, Ra's correct. We cover number 11. One more correct answer. You'll walk away with that 750. All right, I'll take uh, sci-fi again. This sci-fi TV sequel is set in the 24th century, 78 years after the original. Give me the complete name of the current series, Mark. Star Trek, The Next Generation. Yes, that's correct. The tie again between Mark and Marianne. One more correct answer from either player, uh, and we'll have our winner. Let's go with the 50s. First time in this category. In 1954, Marilyn Monroe married this famous Yankee Clipper. Mark for the win. Joe DiMaggio. That's correct. Yeah, congratulations. Well done, Mark. 
That's all four corners. You've won the first round, and that's $750 in cash I talked about. And as you know, all the money you win here on Trump Card is yours to keep. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment with round number two. We'll double the prize money to $1,500. And now, round two of Trump Card with your host, Jimmy Cephalo. All right, welcome back to the program where Mark Bouncer has just won $750 in cash. This now is round two, and one of our players will win $1,500 in cash by being the first to cover the five numbers across the center line. Right now, Debbie is giving each of our players a special Trump Card. Beginning with this round, the players may use the card to block the progress of one of their opponents. Now, the players, you can only play your trump card after you give a correct answer. You only have one uh, card. We've got two rounds to go, so play it wisely. And players, if you win the game and still have your trump card left over at the end, you go into the bonus round with an extra advantage. Now, here are the categories for round number two. And they are Mac Attack, people, places, and things with Mac in their names, TV Towns, Next Stop Greece, and Leave a Message. We'll give you a fictional phone message. You tell us might, who might have recorded it. Each category contains five questions. And uh, let's see, who won the first round? It was you, Mark, of course. Would you please choose the first category for us? Okay, uh, sure. I'm sure I've got some answers, so I'll leave a message. <laughs> All right. Everyone hands on buzzers. The race is on. What Army officer might have phoned in this message? We reach Little Bighorn tomorrow. And I forgot to pack my arrow shirt. Bob? George Armstrong Custer. Correct. We cover number 21 on your card. Let's try TV Towns, Jim. To escape the pressures of Dallas, Gary Hewing spun, spun himself off into this spicy Southern California cul-de-sac. Name it, Marianne. That would be Knott's Landing. Yes, that would be. We cover number six on your card. All right, I'll take next stop, Greece. Rising well over 9,000 feet, it's the highest mountain in Greece. What's its name? Mark? Olympus. Yes, Mount Olympus is correct. Well done. Each player has one uh, square covered in round number two. Next stop, Greece. This famous fortified hill upon which the Parthenon was built was the center of ancient Athens. Name it, Marianne. The Acropolis. Yes, that's right. We cover seven on your card. Uh, let's see. Next stop, Greece again. We stay in the same category, and here's the question. What is the popular white Greek cheese usually made of goat or sheep milk? Mark? Feta. Feta is right, yes. Um, TV Towns. In Murder, She Wrote, Angela Lansbury plays an adventuresome widow living in what quaint Maine village? Marianne. Crab Apple Cove, Maine. No, oh, I'm sorry, Marianne. Cabot Cove, the correct answer. You're blocked out of the next question. We continue on in our next available category, which is Next Stop Greece. Name the anise-flavored liqueur that is a favorite in Greek tavernas. Ouzo, the correct answer. Marianne, you're back into it. Our next available category, Leave a Message. What 1967 Paul Newman movie character might have left this outgoing message? Sorry I missed your call. Out eating eggs. I guess what we have here is a failure to communicate. Marianne. The Hustler? No, Cool Hand Luke is what we were looking for. You're blocked out of the next question. We go on to Mac Attack the first time in this category. She was spotted in the chorus of a Broadway musical and went on to win an Oscar in terms of endearment. Name her, Bob. Shirley MacLaine. Yes, that's correct. We cover number 22 in your card. Marianne, you're back into it. Right. Bob, please select for us. Uh, let's try Mac Attack once more, Jimmy. This commentator co-hosts a nightly in-depth news hour with co-host Jim Lair. Name him. Marianne. McNeil. Yes, that's correct. We cover number 8 on your card. Okay. Uh, Mac Attack. He seized the throne of Scotland after killing Duncan I, named this real-life Shakespearean king. Marianne. Macduff. I'm oh, sorry, Macbeth, the answer we needed. And you're blocked out of the next question. I'm sure if Shakespeare had thought of it, he might have named him Mac Macduff, which sounds like a good one to me. We continue on with TV Towns. Billy Joe, Bobby Joe, Betty Joe, and Uncle Joe all lived in this Petticoat Junction town. Name it. Bob. Hooterville. Hooterville is right. Yes, we cover number 23. Two more correct answers, Bob. You'll win this round. Marianne, you're back in. Bob, you control the board. Leave a message, Jimmy, please. What Kipling character could have could leave this outgoing message? I am out carrying the water, but I am a better man than you. So, Marianne? Gunga Din. Leave a message. Gunga Din might have said that correct. Yes. Okay. Um, let me try. Leave a message again. What musical comedy character might leave this message? Sorry about the rain in Spain, Eliza. Would you prefer to vacation? Mark? Henry Higgins. That's correct. On the Riviera, Henry Higgins is the correct answer. We cover number 38. 
Uh, leave a message. Last question in this category. In what novel might the following message be heard? Big Brother can't come to the phone right now. He's watching you, Mark. 1984. Yes, that's correct. We cover number 39, a tie between Mark and Mary Ann. Um, next stop, Greece. Last question in this category. Greece was freed in the early 19th century when the Ottoman forces of this country were defeated. Name the country for the win, Mark. Turkey? Turkey is correct. Congratulations. Yes. You've won round one. Now you've won round two. The money keeps adding up. Congratulations. We'll be back in a moment. Marianne, Bob, don't get discouraged. Lots of money still ahead. We'll double the prize money once again to $3,000 in round number three in just a moment. Welcome back. It's round three of Trump Time, and here's Jimmy Cephalo. All right, players, things are really going to begin to move. This is our flash round. There are no categories. The first player to complete their card will win $3,000 and a shot at our Trump Card bonus for $10,000. So let's recap the scores. Marianne, you need eight correct answers for the money. Bob, 11 answers will give you that $3,000. Mark, you've got the lead right now. You are six answers away. And a reminder, you all have your Trump cards, and you can use them to block the progress of an opponent after you give a correct answer. Good luck to each and every one of you. Hands on buzzers, and here we go. This man became the world's first recording artist with the song, Mary Had a Little Lamb, named the inventor of the phonograph. Marianne. Thomas Edison. Yes, that's correct. What's the standard number of nominations in each category at the Academy Awards? Marianne. Five. Yes, that is correct. What movie mogul founded his own studios and was the original voice of Mickey Mouse? Mark. Walt Disney. Yes, that is correct. We cover number 32 on your card. In what Asian capital are tourists allowed to visit the Forbidden City? Marianne. Peking. Beijing. Ye yes, either or is acceptable. We cover number four on your card. In the classic poem, Flynn and Blake were left on base when this mighty ball player struck out. Mark? Casey. Yes, Casey at the bat is correct. You're four answers away. Marianne, you need five. Dr. Dr. Herman Tarnauer named his diet after this New York community. Name the diet, Mark. Scarsdale. Yes, that's correct. Three answers away from the money. I'm going to trump Marianne. All right, we put the big trump uh, card on your podium, Marianne. That means you need a correct answer to remove it. Okay. Here we go. Speaking of this game, Anatoly Karpov said... It is everything art, science, and sport. Chess. Right, Marianne. That's what he was referring to. We removed the trump card <clears throat> from your podium, and you are now five correct answers away from the money. What famous jazz singer was dubbed Lady Day? Bob. Billy Holiday. That's correct. Yeah, we cover number 17 on your card. Since June of 1988, the Uniroyal Chemical Company stopped selling it. Now Apple Harvest will officially be free of what chemical, Mark? Alar. Alar is correct. Two answers away from the money. This basketball legend centered six world championship teams and scored a record 38,387 points. Name him, Bob. Will Chamberlain. No, sorry, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the correct answer. You're blocked out of the next question. Derived from the Greek meaning without feeling, it's given to patients before operations. Marianne, what is it? Anesthesia. Yes, that is correct. I would like to trump Mark. All right, Mark, you know what that means. You've got to give us a correct answer to remove it from your podium. In 1907, the artist Brock and Picasso founded this art movement which shuns conventional treatment of space and form. Name it. Mark? Cubism? Cubism is correct. Yeah. A quick uh, removal of the trump card from your podium, you're two answers away. If you're in a Donnybrook, you're in a fight. But if you're in the city of Donnybrook, you're in what country? Mark? Scotland? Oh, sorry, Ireland, the correct answer. You're blocked out of the next question. A break for Marianne. 500 years before Columbus, this son of Eric the Red explored the North American continent. Name him. Marianne, you beat it. Life Erickson. Yes, that is the correct answer. We got number 12 on your card. You're now three answers away. Mark, you're back in. You need two answers. In 1857, a man named Elijah G. Otis introduced the first of these with a safety device. Mark? Elevator. Yes, the elevator is the correct answer. One more answer. You win $3,000. Does the prime meridian run east and west or north and south? Mark for the win. North and south. North and south is the correct answer. Congratulations, Mark. We've won the game, $3,000, and a chance to play our $10,000 Trump card bonus. Very well done. Marianne and Bob, we don't have any money for you, but you are two very nice people and two terrific players. The best of luck to both of you. Mark, come on downstage, I'll show you how you can win some more money. Congratulations. You've won, uh, to this point in the game, as much money as anyone can win in this contest. Let's see, $5,200. And $50, and you've done it against some pretty good competition. They're tough. They, they are, are tough. very tough. But I tell you what is a bit tougher.
that large thing approaching from behind. I it is can called, feel it. Yes, you can. <laughs> it is called our Trump Card Bonus Board, and you might be able to beat it for $10,000. We'll find out just how Mark does when we return in just a moment. Marcus, you know, right now I've got a chance to win as much as $10,000 and possibly qualify for our $100,000 Trump Championship. I imagine that meets with your approval? Uh, certainly does. <laughs> I'm ready to beat the board. All right, here's how we play the Trump Card bonus. The board has 25 numbers. Give me a correct answer, we'll light up a number on the board. Now, the object of the game is to light up five numbers in a row, either across, up and down, or diagonally, by answering questions correctly. And if you can do that in 45 seconds or less, you'll win $10,000. Are you with me? I'm with you. All right. Before we begin, I'm going to ask Debbie to join us. She's carrying a very special deck of cards. They are numbered 1 through 25. And if you'll please choose one for us, we'll light that number up on the board. Okay? The number 1, which is a wonderful random selection, by the way. Thank you very much, Debbie. You've got a free number. You've got 45 seconds on the clock. You call out a number, I'll ask a question. If you pass or if you answer incorrectly, we'll block that number and you must start a new line. The reason why that random choice was a good one is because you've got all three options. You can go across, down, or diagonally. Good choice. Remember, if you don't give me a number, I can't ask a question. That'll cost you time. Good luck. We'll start the clock as soon as I begin the first question. Mark, give me a number. Seven. The National Zoo in Washington, D.C. is part of what institution? Smithsonian. Correct. Thirteen. What element has the chemical symbol SN? Ten. Correct. 19. What famous anthropologist wrote Coming of Age in Samoa? Mead. Correct. Give me a number. 25. In what comic strip did the mythical holiday known as Sadie Hawkins Day originate? Gasoline Alley. Wrong. Sorry. Uh, two. What last name did Shakespeare give Romeo? Capulet. Wrong. Sorry. Number. Uh, six. What woman founded the American Red Cross? Claire Barton. Correct. 11. What country has the most time zones? Russia. Soviet Union. Correct. 16. What famous dam is located on the Nile River? That's one. Correct. 21. What city in western France is the site of an annual 24-hour sports car race? Oh, Mark, Le Mans was what Ooh. you were looking for. Le Mans. I owned a Le Mans. <laughs> it was so close. We're going to catch our breath, both of us. We'll sum it all up and we return in just a moment. Today's contestants will receive Travel Savers Hotel Director, discounts from the nation's leading chain of independent travel agencies, 1-800-726-SAVE. Mark Bowser has just won $5,250. The bonus questions were some toughies. Now, the ones you missed, what, uh, in what comic strip did the mythical holiday known as Sadie Hawkins Day originate? Little Abner, the correct answer. And uh, what last name did Shakespeare give to Romeo? You said Capulet. That was uh, Juliet's last name. Montague was the correct answer we were looking for there. But uh, you did very well. $5,250. It's nothing to sneeze at these <laughs> days. What do you think you'll do with the money, Mark? Uh, I have lots of plans for it. Probably some vacation. And I'm sure I have some people out there who want some. I have a sister in med school. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Sam. I'll be getting some calls tonight, I'm sure. <laughs> well, good. Your sister in med school. Uh, some nice thoughts about what you can do with Starting that money. Starting your fourth year. Starting your fourth year where? Johns Hopkins. All right. Well, the best of luck to her. And isn't it nice that a brother would say, hey, maybe I'll help my sister out with medical school? I'm sure one day she'll return the favor. Thank you. All right. Mark, it's because of people like you we enjoy doing this program. Thanks for being a part of the show, and the best of luck to you. Okay. All right, for Mark Bowser, for Debbie Massey, I'm Jimmy Cephalo. Thanks for joining us from Trump Castle in Atlantic City. We'll see you next time right here on Trump Park. So long, everybody. Our departing contestants will receive the following. Costa Boda's sales vibes. Master glass blowers team with designers to capture the mind's imagination in crystal. Swedish craftsmanship from Costa Boda.
Coming up next on The Cosby Show, Vanessa leads the way when she wants to become her school's first female drum major. Share the laughs next on The Cosby Show on Channel 10. A production of Createl Limited and Fiedler Berlin Productions in association with Telepictures Productions and is distributed by Warner Brothers Domestic Television Distribution. It takes lightning fast reflexes Bedrock! with non stop knowledge. Who is the only president to serve two non consecutive terms? Supreme strategy. I'll go with film biography. And a bit of lady luck on your side. You're two answers away. But even then, Victory is never guaranteed. Dave for the win. Ava for the win. Mark for the win. In the ultimate game of skill and knowledge. You are in a roll. Trump Kai. Weeknights at 6 on Channel 27. From the spectacular Trump Castle in world-famous Atlantic City, it's time to play television's non-stop game of knowledge, Trump Card. And now, here's the star of Trump Card, Jimmy Sapphiro. Thank you for joining us today for Trump Card, everyone. We're here at the fabulous Trump Castle in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where competition is the king around here. And we have three contestants who are ready to challenge each other today for over $15,000 in cash and a chance to win $100,000 in the Trump Card Championship. So let's play Trump Card. Before we begin, please welcome our Trump Card hostess, Miss Debbie Massey. Hi, Debbie. Hi. All right, now let's meet today's contestants. Contestant number one from Schoolville, New Skullville. Jersey. Schoolville, New Jersey. Yes. Marianne Kane. Marianne, yes. welcome to the show. Thank A degree you. in modern languages from Seton Hall University. That's right. What French and Spanish. French, French and Spanish. Have yes. you ever taught them as you've no. gone through the years? No. Never a teacher. Never used it. Any no. practical application? Yes, in my current job as a paralegal, I have to speak with a number of people that only speak Spanish or French, so I get a chance to use that. Terrific. Time. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And Bob Wurgis. Correct, Jimmy. All right, I got it right. From uh, Irma, New Jersey, retired, married with six children. That's correct. What are the names and ages? What's the range? From 35 to 26. You don't look that old, Bob. <laughs> well, here. thank you. The makeup person here did a wonderful job. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the show. And uh, Mark Balser from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, who used to produce quiz and game shows in college. Anything like Trump Card? Uh, nothing like Trump Card. Um, that's why you're here and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hopefully I'm going to be here handing you or Bob or Marianne some money by the end of the day. Welcome to the program. Best of luck. Here's how we play our game. Each of the contestants have their own Trump Card. The object of the game is to cover all 15 numbers on their card by answering questions correctly. The first player to do so can win over $5,000 plus the chance to win the $10,000 Trump Card bonus. <laughs> Players, you can win round one and $750 in cash by being the first to cover all four corners of your card, and you'll do so by answering questions in the following categories, and they are twins, the 50s, sci-fi, and two-letter words. Now, each category contains four questions, and a correct answer will cover a corner on your card and give you the right to select the next category. An incorrect answer, and you'll be frozen out of the next question. Now, Marianne, you won the draw backstage, so if you will, would you please start the program for us? Yes, I'll take sci-fi. All right, everyone, hands on buzzers. May the best player win. Name the sci novel Journey to the Center of the Earth. Mark? Jules Verne. Yes, that's correct. Good start. We cover number 31 on your card. Uh, let's take Twins. In the 1988 film Twins, what unlikely actors played the Twins? Marianne? Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Yeah, that's correct. We cover number one on your card. Uh, I'll take twins again. 
According to ABC TV, this Angelus series was the nation's most recorded show on home VCRs. Name this David Lynch program. Marianne, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks is right. Yes, good start for you. Let me try sci-fi. This prolific author has written more than 200 books, including Fantastic Voyage and the Foundation series. Bob? Asimov? Yes, that's correct. Name this Russian-born sci-fi author. That is the correct answer. You're on the as well. Let's try two-letter words, Jimmy, please. In various phrases, this word comes before hawk, lib, and nauseam. Name it, Mark. Ad. Ad, that's correct. Yeah, we've got the tie now between Marianne and Mark. You both have two corners covered. I'm doing well with it. I'll stay with two-letter words. What two-letter word is the name of the Egyptian sun god? Marianne. That would be Ra. Yes, Ra's correct. We cover number 11. One more correct answer. You'll walk away with that 750. All right, I'll take uh, sci-fi again. This sci-fi TV sequel is set in the 24th century, 78 years after the original. Give me the complete name of the current series, Mark. Star Trek, The Next Generation. Yes, that's correct. The tie again between Mark and Marianne. One more correct answer from either player, uh, and we'll have our winner. Let's go with the 50s. First time in this category. In 1954, Marilyn Monroe married this famous Yankee Clipper. Mark for the win. Joe DiMaggio. That's correct, yeah, congratulations. Well done, Mark. That's all four corners. You've won the first round, and that's $750 in cash I talked about. And as you know, all the money you win here on Trump Friday is yours to keep. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment with round number two. We'll double the prize money to $1,500. And now, round two of Trump Card with your host, Jimmy Cephalo. All right, welcome back to the program where Mark Bowser has just won $750 in cash. This now is round two, and one of our players will win $1,500 in cash by being the first to cover the five numbers across the center line. Right now, Debbie is giving each of our players a special Trump Card. Beginning with this round, the players may use the card to block the progress of one of their opponents. Now, the players, you can only play your trump card after you give a correct answer. You only have one uh, card. We've got two rounds to go, so play it wisely. And players, if you win the game and still have your trump card left over at the end, you go into the bonus round with an extra advantage. Now, here are the categories for round number two. And they are Mac Attack, people, places, and things with Mac in their names, TV Towns, Next Stop Greece, and Leave a Message. We'll give you a fictional...